What's up, YouTube? So, I saw the Force Awakens. Oh, man. What do you say? It's not a bad movie. But if you're a fan... If you're a fan of the original three episode, four, five, and six, um, this would be disappointing. You know, I view this right. Real men from like the eighties who really loved it, um, should not really like this interpretation of Star Wars. Right off the bat, all it is, it's a remake slash retelling. It steals all the elements from the original movies. And it tries to pass it off as this completely new film. As much as I despise and hate the prequels, at least it tried to be original. This is just stealing things left and right from the suits. I mean, the First Order Stormtroopers were exactly like the Republic. You know, just with a new name. From the guy with the funny name Snoke, who's supposed to be their version of Palpatine. You know, and this movie, it tried to do everything bigger. Bigger explosions, you know, bigger characters. The first time you see Snoke, he's this big giant. You know, he reminds you of, um, of one of the characters from Lord of the Rings, you know. At first, I had to keep reminding myself, this isn't Gollum. This isn't Gollum. This isn't Gollum. It's a real feminized movie also. Now, they take the character Finn, who is the black guy. His name escapes me. <sighs> they made him into some side joke character who's been friend-zoned by the, male, the main female Ray. Ray looks like Luke Skywalker, but better. She has no formal training. <laughs> she, 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 she's never flown a plane or it seems a, uh, or at least the film may about to be a, a piloted anything. She's just naturally good at everything. It's actually a movie that's, how do I say it? It's, it's, it has a lot of terrible stuff in there. But sometimes the bright lights, explosions, and the fact that it's not terrible gets nowhere. People may think it's a good film. It's something I will definitely see again down the line. But put it like this. There was nothing memorable in the movie. There was a scene that they killed Han Solo. You saw it coming from a mile away. Han Solo, obviously was one of the best characters from the original trilogy but he was a man's man it seems like Disney well reports are they don't want Slave Lair to ever be called Slave Lair or I mean, make any reference to Slave Lair ever again it's it's the feminization of Star Wars they want to appeal to feminist females the SJWs the BLMs uh, the PC culture and that's what they accomplished by killing off Han Solo. And you know how killing Darth Vader, for example, was a big deal? Killing Obi-Wan Kenobi was a big deal. This was just like, there it is, move on to the next scene. It just didn't feel like it was a big moment. You know, what made the original trilogy stand out also besides those moments with the music? This original, this episode seven, there was no great score, nothing memorable. Um, this film actually reminds me of Terminator Genesis. While it's not terrible, it's just not that good. If especially if you compare it to T two, which was iconic, iconic scenes, iconic quotes, iconic music. Episode seven had nothing really iconic, music wise. I'm not sure exactly what happened in Hollywood where these great musical beats like you know Superman's um well, at least from the seventies, Christopher Reeves, you know the iconic tunes. You know the iconic tunes of like I said T two, you know these things, you know. 
it just seems music these days kind of recreate iconic music, iconic lines, iconic scenes. And to prove this, Episode 7 tried to rip off everything it can from the originals, you know, Episode 4, 5, and 6. Bigger Death Star. And it even took shots at the Republic, let's say, well, the Republic is old, we're new. You know, it, it's kind of like, Another terrible movie was um, the remake of Vacation. You know, the original was Chevy Chase. The new version starred Christina Applegate, right? But they even said it, even though it's a comedy, they even said in that movie, well, this movie can definitely stand on its own. It's not, it's not just a remake. It was just not a redo of the original Vacation. So I, I reviewed that comment the shot at the Republic as, oh yeah, we're bigger, we're better than the Republic. And they went as far as destroying the Republic. So, I would say Star Wars Episode 7, it's a fine movie, but it's not this grandiose movie simply because there's so much elements that are there. It wasn't written to be written. It was written to make money. You know, um, like every movie is. Every movie is written to get money, but is sometimes you find purity in it. Um, when they're pushing this PC culture down your throat, it ruins things. Ray, Jedi Ray, was all the original characters. She was basically a unicorn. You know, nobody really, <laughs> I don't say supposed to be a unicorn, but when you create something that's a unicorn, it's, 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 it's not fallible. It's infallible, sorry. It's it's too perfect to be liked, you know. Like Luke had his moments where he's weak. Ray had no moments really, you know. She was strong. She had courage. It's basically a film made for females, you know. It's my theory that Hollywood just wants to get rid of the male audience because men don't really spend the money anymore. It's mostly females. Men just work. Um, that's why this movie had this, such a strong, perfect female lead, who's stronger, faster, more powerful than Luke apparently. She beats a trained Jedi slash Sith in Kylo Ren. And it seemed like it was never in doubt. <laughs> you know, it was absolutely ridiculous. Sometimes you see these ridiculous moments in anime. They, they stole ideas. And I think it was, a lot of the movie was a lot of hogwash. It's just a movie that's watchable. And because the prequels were so terrible. <laughs> It, it's getting a free pass, I feel. It is getting a free pass. Now, towards the end, they introduced Luke, who looked like Obi, Obi-Wan Kenobi. So I'm guessing that's what they're trying to accomplish. It's a, it's like the older, how do I put this? They changed all the characters to tamer versions of real men. <laughs> you know, Luke, obviously, he's not a wild-eyed boy anymore, but he's this guy in hiding. And then you have Han, who completely transitions from man's man to a, let's be honest, a hipster. <laughs> you know, that's what he is. He's a hipster. They made him to some soft guy who, uh, so touchy-feely, you know. And that's a dangerous thing about making quote-unquote prequels, or sequels, sorry. And, se- and sequels, but okay, but prequels, that's a dangerous thing. You're gonna ruin, to make money. And so, this, I'm talking about Genesis also, right? Terminator Genesis, for example. They're throwing the old fans under the bus. Here, John Connor is your savior. Here, uh, Han Solo is the scoundrel that you guys love. Because culture says it's wrong to be a, it's wrong to be a scoundrel. They're basically destroying that character that you love to please the new audience. To also add, they don't, they can't write great scripts. So the best thing to do is cut off the old audience since they no longer can make their money because, you know, they're, they're dying. Let's be honest, they're dying. So they cut off the old audience, um, link. You know, we love John Connor. We love Han Solo. By destroying that, you can start a new, similar how they destroyed the Republic. You know, basically, again, everything, it seems like they're throwing a lot of elements there to make money. Like the Guardian soldiers. They're, if you guys haven't seen the tons of action figures for the Guardian soldiers and 
um, uh, I'm blanking on it, but they basically made soldiers in the movie to pay in one scene to sell more toys. That's what they did. And Chewie was a side character. Chewie shouldn't even been on the film. They probably did it to make Han's death somewhat meaningful, which it wasn't. And there was a scene now, this is where the uh, SJWs, feminists, and BLMs um, really um, took a hold, right? I remember when the trailer first appeared, they were celebrating, oh, this trailer has no white males. It had a female, a black, and a Latino. That's what these feminists, SJWs, celebrate. I mean, and in the film, there was a scene where I think the rebels were piloting their ships and it went the scene cut from each pilot it went from black guy Asian girl alien alien Latino all celebrating in that order and I'm thinking to myself okay maybe I'm just being the chauvinist pay that everybody says I am but then they did it again another celebration scene where they made sure not to show any um white males <laughs> it was the funniest was mind-boggling thing and you understand why this film was created it wasn't created for the guys who really loved star wars it was created for the disney generation the the gaming generation the guys who enjoyed the benefits of the guys who worked hard to create things essentially that's what it is you know in school you know many of us who love star wars were I don't want to say complete orcast, but we weren't the most popular guys, you know. Now it's completely changed, you know. We paved way, it seems like. And now those who don't really care about the product are receiving the benefits of it. You know, when I went, you had females. I guess they, they were, it seemed like they were pretending to... Well, those without kids, like, like those with kids have uh, different issues, right? So it seems like they were trying to pander to the men there to be noticed. At least that's what I noticed when I went. Anyway, uh, Star Wars, if you're a fan of it, it's a real disappointment. Just because you knew they were going to try to kill off some of the older characters simply to make way for new characters. Disney just wanted that money. And it was a cash cow, and it would be passed off as a good film simply because people want it to be a good film and they haven't analyzed it. Some people can't, uh, can't analyze. They need other people to analyze. We live in a culture where people don't think for themselves. Uh, the SJWs, for example, they don't think for themselves. They have to wait for a Twitter uh, uproar to happen. Then they'll react. You know, Twitter is mostly females. Um... I'm not sure of the percentage, but it's mostly made up of females. I would say it's like 70, 65% of females. You know, that's why you see a lot of movements happen and people pretend to care. So, Star Wars, if you're a real fan, it's probably like a 5 and it's watchable. It's kind of like Independence Day. It's, yeah, it's not a good of a movie, but there's a bunch of explosions and big things happen. You know, not meaningful, just big things happen. Bigger Death Star. <laughs> Anyway, guys, Kylo Ren is no Darth Vader. They tried to thread things, but it was emotionless. It was emotionless film, lacking real substance. It had feminist characters just basically shoving men aside, which made females happy. It supports feminism. And Disney wants that money. They understand that females spend 75% of the money while well, men work hard <laughs> to generate the money if you're just brand new guy while I never stopped it and watched Star Wars or thought about it this will make you happy kind of like Terminator Genesis made you happy it'll be a 8.5 film but if you're a pure fan who actually cares about Star Wars it's 5 and that's my quick review slash overview of Star Wars and society in general. Take care, guys.